guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Eamon. If you're new here, if you are a returning sub, you what's up? It's your girl, Eamon. Now, today is a very, very exciting review. I'm going to be reviewing the new Marvel movie Eternals, which means you didn't actually watch the night it came out. So I was so fucking excited. If you guys know me, then you know I'm a recently converted Marvel fan. If you've been following the series, then you definitely know that. But yeah, I was so, so excited. Now, truly, I have so much to say about this movie. I went on some expectations roller coaster. I was up here, then I was down here, then I was just laying in the middle over here. You know, I was like, wow, so many characters, so much diversity, so many actors that I love, let's do this. And this has spoilers in it, you guys, so if you haven't seen Eternals yet, watch the movie, then come back to this video. Thank you. On to the review. Now, I love how the movie started with the backstory of who the Eternals were and how Arishim created them. And the text at the beginning was very Star Wars-esque. I was like, wow, we're already off to a great start. My two favorite things, Star Wars and Marvel. Yes! And I thought it was nice how quickly and early on they introduced each Eternal and what power they had when they were saving the 5000 BC Neanderthals from the Deviants. And I was so excited to see this cast and I had no idea Kit Harrington was in this movie so I was like, is this a Game of Thrones reunion or what? We have Rob Stark and Jon Snow and apparently she's called Cersei so I mean... Come on. But Richard Madden was honestly impeccable as Icarus, and I've loved Gemma Chan since she was on Humans. But again, I mean, her name was Cersei hyphen Lannister. I mean, not, but like, come on, like, I don't know. It's a bit. <laughs> I was like, this is so Game of Thrones esque, like, so much already, and the movie bear has barely begun. But I actually had no idea Gemma Chan was gonna be the lead actress. I assumed it was gonna be Salma Hayek, you know, that she would have been the main role since she's Ajax and she's the connection to Arishim. So I was like, ooh, Gemma Chan actually has a lot of lines. Oh, wait, she's the main character. Now, I was also surprised overall at how little dialogue Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek got in the movie, considering who they are. And I knew from the start their mission wasn't just to maintain peace and technological advancement on Earth because I mean Druid could have literally stopped every war from ever happening and Arishim even says to Ajak early on, oh remember why you're really here. Like hello, spoiler alert, we know there's a reason they're actually there. But also I feel like we definitely needed subtitles on that shit because I could not for the life of me understand what Arishim was saying every time he spoke. I was like, why are you mumbling bruv? Okay, let's talk about Icarus's entrance. I loved how alpha it was when he gets to London to help out Dane and Sprite and Cersei. I was like, if I if I was Dane right now, I'd be hella insecure. I mean, they did date for 5,000 years and got married apparently. But also Sprite's character annoyed me throughout the whole movie and it didn't even get better at the end. Like, she was like the Arya Stark of my experience. Like, I never liked Arya even in Game of Thrones. Even till the very end I never liked her. And I feel like Sprite gave me those Arya vibes in this movie. I was like, shut up! I, like, I could kick her in the face so many times if I could. So as a Pakistani actress myself, I was very interested in Kumail Nanjiani and how his acting was gonna be because of course he's one of the, like the two Pakistanis in Hollywood who've made it so I was like my future could be him. And of course they made him Indian in the movie and I was like, okay, great. But honestly, I thought his acting was okay. His comic relief was hilarious with his little chauffeur, Curran. Honestly, filming him throughout the fight scenes and just being a meme in general, I could not stop laughing. But then also the moment when he finds out that Ajax is dead, he goes from straight joking to suddenly pretending to look sad. And it's like, no dude, that's bad acting, like please. But other than that moment, I thought his character Character was funny and very needed and like I'm proud of him for like making it because not many Pakistanis do in this industry so I was like go Kumail Nanjiani. Now when all the Eternals reunite before finding Druig it's honestly quite cute like we get to see what Thena and Galgamesh were doing and I feel like Angelina's character barely got any screen time and the only thing that made her borderline relevant was the fact she had mad weary and could kill you at any second. Like she took so many martial arts classes and even ballet for the role and I just wish I got to see more of her doing that. And I actually I actually loved Cersei as well. I thought Gemma Chan did an awesome job although her emotions are always super super muted even when she played the sister in Crazy Rich Asians she was very muted and subtle so I don't know if that's just 
her character choice and every character she plays or that's just how she conveys emotion but I was like I mean it is it is effective you wouldn't be getting these roles if they weren't effective no one Ajax chooses Cersei to be the next like communicator with Irishman she finally talks to Irishman and finds out why they were really created and the fact that he made deviants as well everyone had like a 200 century life crisis and I don't think I got impacted by this huge revelation as much as an audience member was supposed to but the whole celestial thing I was like ah isn't Quinn half celestial from Guardians of the Galaxy and his dad is a full-on celestial and I was like ah oh, Easter egg connections that I actually recognize and understand. I am a true fan indeed. And I knew everyone was gonna want to stop the emergence. I was like, yes, girl, yes. But also, where truly were you guys when Thanos came in like the Avengers and needed you guys? Now, the Amazon fight was so cool when everyone finally finds Druig and he's there mind controlling this whole ass Spanish village for himself. And then the Deviants attack, and now we're getting smarter as well. And honestly, See, the deviants look a lot like the things from the movie Aliens vs. Predator. I was like, am I watching an alien movie or a Marvel movie? I really didn't know. And then the fight there and Gilgamesh dying, I was like, RIP, Thena is gonna be on the loose now. And I couldn't believe that the ship was under the ruins of Babylon the whole time and the fact that Makari was living inside it for centuries. Like, bro, didn't it get stuffy down there? And I knew, I knew Icarus was sus from the start. He was never really fully on board with anything and then he ruined the uni mind. Like, come on, I wanted to like you, Icarus. And the final fight was so entertaining to watch because it's like a family fighting against each other. Makari was literally slapping the shit out of Icarus. I was like, you look like Nini playing with her rat toy. And when Thena goes and battles a sentient deviant crow, I really thought she was gonna die at the end and he was gonna absorb three Eternals powers, but thankfully she remembered. And I was very, very mad also when Sprite stabbed Cersei. I was like, I'll kill you, you annoying little garden gnome. And I thought Cersei was gonna die after turning Tiamat into ice because it took so much of her power, but she didn't. So I was like, oh, I don't have to cry now. Thank you. The end credit scene was also nice because I was like, okay, what lore is Dane part of with this mystical sword? It reminded me of like the darkness in Thor, like the second Thor dark world. I was like, is he part of that sort of world? And then I was like, isn't it so convenient that Dane is now part of the lore as well? Let's keep Kit Harrington in the in the series. Now I was truly pissed at the post credit scene because I was like, why is Harry Styles playing Eros? And decide what your accent is gonna be. Is it gonna be American or English? Because you cannot be doing both, which he was doing. Now onto my pros and cons of the movie. Now my pros, now I felt like this movie was somehow light to digest than other Marvel movies. The action scenes were fun, and I think Gemma Chan and Richard Madden did impeccably well. And I loved the humor between Kingo and Curran. I thought it was a literal gold, you guys. But also, I was like, Richard Madden and Gemma Chan obviously are actors in the UK. They've actually met quite a few times and are really good friends before they got casted in the series so I was like I feel like maybe a huge reason they actually got casted was because of their like on-screen chemistry because they're such good friends already and I was like is there something else going on there perhaps I wouldn't be opposed I wouldn't be mad at it now on to the cons and I feel like this may be an unpopular opinion and I may get hate for it but I'm gonna say it anyway. Now I feel like because the cast was so star studded the plot wasn't really as hashed out as I wish it was. Like I feel like each character didn't get enough time for us to really get attached to them. We were just meant to. And there were a lot of things they said and then just left and never spoke about again. Like Ajax was like oh the last eternal died 7,000 years ago. Okay bitch who? Who died? You didn't even tell us that, you just moved on. And also the ending really, really pissed me off. Like, the, it was a huge cop-out as well. Like, I feel like everyone's stories just got wrapped up so quickly. Icarus feels guilty, let me just fulfill my moniker and fly towards the sun and die. Let the other three just go to space and find more Eternals to liberate. Like, the ending just felt like putting a band-aid on a sinking ship. Like, it wasn't enough. You literally just can't end things so easily. And like, it, it just felt like way 
too easy after everything they've been through. So after that, all in all, when I went out of the cinema, I gave it like a 6.5 out of 10. But obviously it's been some days since I've seen it and I've like, I've had to digest it and stuff. So I think I'm gonna move my rating to a seven out of 10. I was, I really had mixed feelings after we got out of the cinema because I feel like the first half of the movie was incredible and the second half just kind of declined and got worse and worse. So I was like, damn it, because I had really high hopes for this movie probably because of the cast and the and the trailer. But yeah, it was still good overall. I don't think the plot was, you know, as good as it could have been by any means. I feel like so many Marvel movies have better plots, but I think it was pretty cool overall. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of my review. And also, have you seen Eternals yet? Have you not? If you haven't, let me know what you're most excited about. If you have seen it, do you agree with what I've said? What are your thoughts on the movies? Let me know. Bye, guys. I will see you in the next video. Also, do you like me like being Arthur but a girl? I kind of love it. Bye guys! <laughs> Star Wars, Marvel, my two favorite things. Sorry you guys, I closed the door for filming but Nini clearly wants to come inside so I'm gonna let her inside. Yes, Nini! Come! Come! Either come inside or stay outside. Sorry about that you guys, I have to leave the door slightly open <laughs> so Nini doesn't have separation anxiety because I closed the door and even though the doors are sliding doors I don't know why she thinks she can't get in if they're closed it's it's very cute